Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Royal Blue Effects. Uh, today we're going to talk about supply and demand. Now we've had um, a huge amount of requests uh, about supply and demand and how to trade it. So today we're going to talk about supply and demand and break everything down and uh, show you what it does and how you can use it in your trades. All right, so what is supply and demand? Well, let's start with what supply is first. So supply is essentially a, a product, right? And then demand is really the people. So if you think about this, if you go to a grocery store and the grocery store uh, has less supply, then that means there's less product and more demand, uh, whereas people coming in to buy the product, there's more demand for that product, right? And therefore, uh, the grocery store is losing supply or not having enough supply to supply the buyers, which are the people. So if you look at it this way, um, supply is generally used uh, for a downtrend. It's always for a downtrend. So this would mean supply is always going down. This is the, the product, right? Then the demand is when people or buyers are going up to buy the supply. So we always use this terminology, terminology in trading where suppliers are, uh, it's, it's the product going down and the buyers are going up to buy more of the supply, right? So this is how we see supply and demand. This is what you need to understand when the markets are, when we say supply and demand. Um, so let's break it down a bit more so I can explain to you guys how to use supply and demand in your trading. So let's go over to the chart over here and I'm going to show you something. Okay, so notice how the markets are pushing up, you know, and down, going up and then down, going up right here. Okay, so you can look at this area here. You can clearly see that there's more buyers than sellers over here, right? Easy to understand. And, you, and a lot of people that trade trend will understand that this is obviously a bullish market and there's more buying than selling here. That's easy to understand. Now, what the hard part is for a lot of people is to identify where those, uh, where the next buying position may happen, right? So if you clearly look at just this example here, notice how um, for buyers, you can tell when there was, there's more buyers than sellers, you can tell when uh, price is pushing up in an impulse manner or behavior. So there's a very impulsive behavior right there where there's more buyers than sellers. There's more buyers and sellers in this area as well, and more buyers and sellers in this area as well. Now, do we know when price is gonna to get to one of these areas? We don't know that at all. Now, the clear indication about trading supply and demand is only understanding and waiting for the markets to come to those levels. So for example, here, you can clearly tell that there is a break of structure happening here. There's more supply, there's more, sorry, there's more demand and supply in this area. And then over here, you can clearly um, see that there's an order block and the markets have um, touched the order block here at this uh, last demand level. And you can look clearly look for buys here for price to go up. Now, is every supply and demand gonna work? No, because nothing's 100% uh, accurate in the markets, right? But what we can do is expect for the markets to come down to these levels because the markets have made a very impulsive movement like so. There's a lot of buyers here, a lot of buyers here and a lot of buyers here. All we need to do is wait for the markets to come back to this level to look for a buy, potential buy here, right? So that's how you can find, a, that's how you can find uh, buy, buying positions or buying opportunities in these levels. Uh, let's look at, uh, now let's look at for supply. Let's look to the left here. Let's see what it's, okay. So here you can see there's a lot, of, it's a huge downtrend, right? And you can see there's a lot of supply, more supply than demand here. So clearly you can see there's a big bearish pressure here. Price broke structure, price comes right back up to an order block. So you can clearly see here that there's more supply than demand. So right here, there's a lot of supply than demand. So we would mark out this area right here for potential uh, for a potential sell. We can also mark out this supply level here as well because price pushed so fast. And now we have to wait for price to come back to a supply level. And look what's happening over here to the, uh, to the left of me right here. Sorry, to the right of me. This is where a good opportunity is to sell right here. 
All you need to do is just wait for markets to get to that supply level and start selling. Wait for the market to touch this order block or the supply level, then you can, then you can sell it. So let's look for another example here. Uh, here's another break of structure right here. Okay, and now let's look at where the last supplying level was right here. Price broke, price went up, price made an impulsive movement here. You can clearly see right here is where the last sellers were. Right there. Sorry, the impulsive, the impulsive, impulsive sellers, excuse me, were right here. And look what's happening right here. Back at it again. We have another supply demand ready to go to take, to take a sell right here. Okay. It's really that easy, guys. Very easy to find supply and demand levels. Uh, let's do another one here. Here's another break of structure, right? Let's look to the, um, let's look at and identify where the last supply level was. Uh, the last, there was two actually right here, one here and one here. So there's uh, right here, I can see it clearly. Right, there's one. There's another one right over here. Okay. And notice what's happening here to the right. We have two opportunities, in fact. We had uh, this opportunity when price hit our order block here. We could have sold here. We could have also sold off at this position as well. Right there. All right. So supply and demand is very easy to identify. You just need to understand when price moves very fast, whether it's bullish or bearish, that's where the buyers or sellers are always at. Um, let me draw it up for you guys again. So if we have, uh, I'm gonna draw uh, where the bulls are in place now. So if, the, if it's bullish pressure, price is moving very fast then pulling back, you can clearly tell now that there's a lot of bullish movement or bullish momentum in here than bearish, okay? There's more, there's more uh, demand than supply here. So I, I always like to indicate uh, supply and demand levels only when price breaks uh, structure like this. This is what validates the next uh, demand level. So once price breaks, I'm looking for price to come back to uh, the, uh, the order block right here, tap it, tap it and go, okay? And then hopefully wait, and then wait for another break of structure, obviously, and wait for markets to come back, okay? Uh, to a demand level and to take price back up. Okay, what we're looking for here in supply and demand is what's called order flow. You want the markets to have an, an easy order flow momentum or behavior like so, okay? This is what's called order flow. Order flow is when price is breaking structure, then coming back to mitigate or coming back to a demand level right here. Breaking again, then coming back to mitigate the last demand level, okay? Same thing goes for supply. When supply is going down like this, we're looking for price to break structure, come back and mitigate the last supply level like this and break again. So if you see something like this, uh, some beautiful, beautiful order flow, this is a good indication that markets are just breaking and, and mitigating, They're breaking and coming back to uh, to a supply level to where you can execute, uh, you know, beautiful trades. Uh, and sometimes in, in, in rare cases, price breaks, price comes back and it barely, even, it doesn't even touch your order block, doesn't even mitigate fully. And then price just starts crashing back down. And the reason for that is because, um, you know, sometimes when you're highlighting your order block like this, price rarely comes back up and touches. And the reason for that is because there isn't enough, um, well, to be honest, there, we don't know what the cause is to why price never reaches all that high. But if you look to the left in here, sometimes prices, when price is doing this, uh, going on an uptrend here on a pullback and price is breaking small like this, okay, going bearish now like that, price is only mitigating the last high and the last low in this area right here. And I'm gonna to explain to you guys in a second what that means. Oops. Uh, so that means the last low and the last high was essentially right here, this. So it's only 
mitigating the uh, the last su the the supply zone. It didn't even it didn't even come up to an order block. Okay, so I'm gonna explain to you guys this quickly right over here to the left side right here. So as you see over here, um, let's say right here, there's a, a complete break of structure that's happening here. Notice how price never went all the way back up to an order block. Okay, but yet it uh, mitigated the last high and the last low. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look at this area right here, okay, look at the last, here's the last low and here's the last high. I'll mark this a different color so you guys can see right there. Okay, there's the last low and last high. And if you expand this, notice how price, no, it's not quite expanded. Well, there we go. Notice how price actually comes and taps the supply level and then takes off again. All right. So what price is doing is it's seeing where the last high and the last low was and then breaking structure and then and then eventually it'll all come back up. But what it's doing is just coming and testing the order block or sorry, the um, supply level here and then taking off. Uh, and that happens ever so ever so, um, you know, often or not often, sorry, ever so slightly. But um, yeah, just pay attention to that. Sometimes it does that. Um, let's get let's go for another example here for demand, so you guys can see how demand works a little bit more. Uh, just like supply, right? So you guys can see here. There's demand, supply, demand, supply, right? You can easily tell that there's more demand than supply um, here. Uh, let's identify the break of structure, which is right here, right there. There's a break of structure. Now notice when I said every time there's a break of structure. I always look for the demand level. Okay, and the demand level is all the way down here. Now let's let's highlight the last low and the last high. Where were they? They were right here, right in this area, right there. Okay, right there. Here's the last low. Let me put, let me print this out for you guys here. There's the last low here, and the last high right here. Okay. Notice how price taps in our our uh, uh, demand level here. Now, did we take it right away? No. You know, there's a few confirmations in order to know how to enter this, but uh, that video is not about how to enter. This video is not about how to enter. It's about identifying uh, our supply and demand levels. Um, and notice, you know, we could have uh, taken a trade anywhere around this area um, from here to here. Okay, and then you can just take it a buy anywhere from this area, and then target our current high here where our destination would be. So that would have been a good uh, good trade for us right there. Now, again, uh, price breaks above. We notice that this is our last area of demand. So demand's also here. There's, a more, uh, there's some demand as well here. And, and then notice how markets don't even come back to the order block. The markets just continuously push up, which is okay. Okay, every time, every time price breaks, that indicates us this is more buyers and sellers happening. So what do we do? We mark that break a structure. We still wait for that area to come back uh, for the markets to, for the market to come back to this level. If they don't come there, don't worry about it. The markets, we can't always predict what the markets are going to do. Okay, the, these are the market makers, the banks and the institutions that do all this uh, movement. So all we can do is just follow our rules. So we can clearly see here that we have some demand here. Or, and we would eventually wait for the markets to come down here. If they don't, no biggie. Let's continue with this. We have another break of structure here. All right. And we can clearly see here. Let me see here. Okay, there's more demand. Here's, here's the last high. Here's the last low. All right. Yeah, let's mark it up a bit here. There we go. And you can have seen easily here how you can have also taken a buy here. From this area, but risk about 50% of this, about 50% of the market here, right? We're gonna take a buy here. Okay, so it's just a repetitive, a repetitive thing. All right, you can also see again, there's a break structure here again. All right, mark your mark your um, your high and your low here. You can clearly see that there's demand and supply, more demand than supply here. And you can mark out your order blocks here. Let's mark that a different color. All right here. 
And here's another order block here. And we would take our buys off of, off of any order block. It could be this one, right? It could also be this one. If the first one failed, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have hesitated to take another buy of the second one. Okay, so we can still win either one, right? And it just continues on and on because it's that easy with supply and demand. Um, all right, guys, if you have any questions, please comment, subscribe, like this video, dislike this video. Let me know what you guys' concerns or questions are. You know, I'm here to answer them. Um, and thank you very much. And we'll uh, look, uh, we'll be uh, recording another video next week.